The green, the gange, the bud, the grass, the gas, the pot, the wacky backy. Going back as far as 2800 BC, this magical plant, known by albeit many questionable names, has been used for medical, industrial and recreational purposes. With the ever-increasing social media expansion of disability, neurodiversity and autism content, crossovers between communities have indeed formed. Some of which you can kind of expect, others kind of came out of the woodworks as something that's a bit suspect, a bit like, whoa, why is this happening? More and more neurodivergent individuals, autistics and those with chronic medical conditions are embracing the identity in line with the idea of a stoner. With my recent podcast guest, Dr. Miyabi Shields, reporting that 70% of surveyed daily marijuana users were actually autistic. But why? Why is this? <laughs> welcome to my autiverse, I'm Thomas Henley, and welcome to one of the four part series of videos that I have for you on autism and marijuana. Yes, today, of course, we are speaking on the usage of marijuana by autistic individuals, focusing primarily on the positive lived experience rather than just the science. I am not a doctor or psychologist, so please consult on the content of this video. And please do not make any choices which could lend you in trouble with the law or trouble with the medical system. I am not a professional. You need to get that out there. The thing is, although even CBD can seem like a health supplement, the compounds in this plant have very active, widespread effects on all of the different nerves and neurons in your body. We call this the endocannabinoid system. It's a very archaic system that has reaches into a lot of different parts of your body, has a lot of real noticeable effects on how you work as a human being. Cannabinoids have potentials for misuse, very real side effects, and may have interactions with different medical drugs, recreational substances, and other mental health disorders. Whilst I'm not a professional, I am autistic myself, and over the past few weeks I've been scouring the internet, particularly on Reddit, to figure out, understand the perspectives of autistic people taking THC, particularly for recreational medical reasons, some of the stories that they have, some of the experiences, the general feel of what it is like to be an autistic stoner, I suppose. So let us speak briefly on the active compound within the marijuana plant, the psychoactive compound, THC, or tetrahydrocannabidiol. I definitely didn't take like five takes of that. <laughs> Basically to give us a reference point for the things that we're going to be talking about today. THC is the compound most associated with the idea of being high. It's responsible for a lot of the psychoactive effects. People can report feeling very giggly, happy, relaxed, or even paranoid, anxious, confused, and in some cases, delusional to some extent. It can heighten senses, making things more pleasurable, time feel a bit slower, and it can lead to psychedelic-like effects, pseudo-psychedelic effects, particularly when cooked into things and eaten as edibles. It can also lead to an increased heart rate, reduced blood pressure, lightheadedness, dry mouth, redness in your eyes, and many more physiological changes. The ratio of THC to CBD leads to different categories of marijuana. You may have heard terms like indica, which is very high CBD. You have hybrid, which is sort of a similar ratio, and then sativa, which is kind of the, the, the stuff that you would find on the black market, basically. It's very, very high. <laughs> no CBD to be found, or at least a minor amount. Then, of course, the mix of terpenes and the types of CBD and THC, because it's not just one thing, there are like different variations of those, basically leads to the classification of different strains, different types of marijuana, like Gorilla Glue or what's another one? OG Kush. <laughs> Original Gangster. Now that we've got some of the basics covered, let's go into something more interesting go into some of the more positive interactions between autistic people and THC containing marijuana. Focusing specifically on lived experience, of course. Number one, social reward and oxytocin mediator. What do I mean by this? This is a flashy title, okay? It's a flashy title to, to head up each section so that it kind of aligns well 
with the markers that are put on the video. You didn't need to know that, but I, th I felt like I needed to say it. Stop looking at me. Perhaps the most interesting and alluring part of THC to autistic people is its potential as a social mediator. Whilst recreational drugs like alcohol can reduce inhibitions, make people a little bit more chatty than usual, THC can actually increase the pleasure that they feel interacting with other creatures, other people, animals even. I know for me as an autistic person, I don't necessarily feel much social anxiety around other people. I've kind of got quite a bit of confidence to me over the years. I feel quite comfortable in most social situations, but I often just prefer to do my own thing as socializing doesn't hold like that high of a reward for me. As mentioned in the introduction, I did a podcast with cannabis researcher Miyabi Shields, who illuminated this THC oxytocin mediator. Oxytocin being involved in love and bonding, which may illuminate the reasons to why THC can encourage autistic people to socialize more and enjoy more too. And some have culminated to show that perhaps we may not feel as much of that sort of social reward. And so THC might be beneficial to some people in those ways. Number two, emotional enhancements. Another of the more encouraging effects of THC is its mood enhancing properties. Yes, people generally report feeling good on it. Autistic people often exhibit what is called alexithymia, which is a dulled perception of your own emotions, and it is tied to this idea of autistic interoception, which I will go into very soon. With alexithymia, it can be hard to know how you feel about some things that happen or how you feel in general. It's not a reduction in the amount of emotion that you can feel, it's just your perception of that emotion. The mood enhancing effects of THC can help some people notice and categorize their emotions a lot more easily, which I think in combination with a lot of introspection and journaling could lead to some beneficial realizations about the past, present, and even potential future. Obviously, Dose dependent, I imagine. <laughs> it's important to remember that THC is psychoactive, meaning that you are not in your normal brain state. So if you are doing this kind of thing, I think it would be a, a good suggestion to try and tie back some of these realizations to sober reality before committing them to your long-term memory. Autism is highly linked to this idea of reduced interoception, what I alluded to earlier. Basically having issues noticing you are hungry, thirsty, need to use the bathroom, as essentially a dulled perception of your own bodily needs, which is connected to alexithymia. One of the effects of THC, particularly when it starts to wear off, is that it can stimulate appetite and even enhance the pleasure that you get from eating. This could be beneficial for those who find eating to be a chore, allowing them to enjoy more nutritious foods, or for those with various EDs, or medical and psychological conditions which could impact one's appetite. It has the potential of enhancing hunger for some people, enough for them to tell that they are hungry, even despite the interoception, but it also has the effect of suppressing feelings of fullness which may lead to overeating. And it's also worth being aware that THC can suppress appetite in the long term with chronic use. Mental illness. Autism tends to co-occur with different mood disorders at a higher rate than holistic and non-autistic individuals, potentially due to our biology, potentially due to a lot of environmental factors that we have to deal with. THC has mood enhancement short-term effects, which may alleviate symptoms during that usage. This is talked about a lot by sufferers of depression that I've seen. However, it's not quite clear how it impacts mental health in the long term. Some studies showing worsening of symptoms too in that long term, which is quite concerning. THC can definitely increase anxiety and paranoia pretty significantly, alongside having the potential for catalyzing schizophrenia in some. More on the potential negatives in a future video. Open-mindedness and spontaneity. Open-mindedness is often tied to the idea of being a stoner. THC, for some, can help them think a lot more laterally, tying different concepts together more creatively, or even open their mind to new ideas, experiences, or concepts. 
Perhaps due to its inhibitory-like effects or emotional enhancement, this may help some people step out of their comfort zone and consider new perspectives, especially if that person is very close-minded and serious about life. Now, autistic people do not think in black and white, a lot of us are quite open to nuance, but I know that in my youth I sought certainties in life in areas that aren't truly certain. Particularly when it came to the psychological or social worlds, it's not that I was black and white in the way that I thought, I just felt safer in that kind of area of life due to its certainty, due to the certainty that it brought me, it helped alleviate a lot of the anxiety that I felt. But in the long run, I think it led me to become fairly close-minded to new ideas and perspectives. I think anything that gives you a new perspective has the potential of opening your mind to new ideas, or at least gets you to really consider them. Being that THC can enhance your emotions, making socialising a lot more enjoyable, in a social setting this may help you consider other people's perspectives and opinions more seriously. Potentially, this may also help someone who is very routine orientated 24-7, but wanting to be a bit more spontaneous and easygoing, allowing them to have more experiences outside of their comfy, stable routine, if they feel able, of course. Sensitivity enhancement. Although you can take both negatives and positives from this THC-related sensory enhancement, the positives can be very enticing to some. Enhancing these two areas could help with decompressing from the stressful experiences that we can have as autistic people in life, and potentially help with relationships where one party has potentially a lower drive or some anxiety around intimacy. Although important to mention, it is dependent on the dose, the person, the situation, and can also lead to some negative effects in these areas when it comes to long-term chronic use. Unmasking and being authentic. One of the things that I've seen going around the autistic stoner communities, I'm still very confused and, and bewildered to how this connection has just, just blossomed between these two communities, but it has, it has. One of the things that I've been seeing going around a lot is the beneficial effect that they've seen with using marijuana during their unmasking process. Whilst some may get anxiety from usage in the short term, many may find that long term they stop caring as much about their differences and find it easier to be more open and authentic to themselves. It lines up pretty well with my own experiences in life, as I always say that even if you are different, being authentic, comfortable with you, confident in who you are, is very impactful on your social life it's not just a buzzword, it's not just like a thing that people say, it generally does make you feel a lot more at one with the world, a lot more comfortable, and a lot more yourself, less fake in a, in a sense. Perhaps it's those positive social interactions you have, or from introspection, but some people find a lot of use in this. More associated with CBD in the mainstream, THC has pain relief properties which can be beneficial to a lot of autistic people. Why? Well, autism can occur with things like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and other chronic pain disorders. A bit of a small one here, but definitely a big reason why some people choose to use marijuana. Insomnia. Autism and sleep issues are also highly correlated, as with a lot of things that you will see when you are researching into autism. THC can make it harder to sleep on its own, but when combined with the right ratio of CBD, it can support someone getting to sleep, and also with resetting someone's sleep cycle, depending on the person and the dose of course. Potentially it suppresses your arousal and increases the amount of adenosine that you release in your brain. Caffeine is something that inhibits adenosine, leading to sort of a wakefulness while the caffeine is working in your system, but as it starts to go down, the caffeine starts to stop acting, the adenosine is released in larger quantities, leading you to get that dreaded caffeine crash. Although it can be used for sleep, it has also been shown to reduce the amount of rapid eye movement sleep or REM sleep that you can get, and REM sleep is pretty important. The THC can also potentially reduce sleep quality in the long term. 
However, for those with bad recurrent nightmares, perhaps those with PTSD, it can reduce the amount of dreams that you have, which could be seen as a positive in some applications. Well, that's all of the positive experience I've heard of scouring the depths and analysing the experience from autistic stoner communities, but I'm not done. No, I'm not done. Next time, we're going to be having a look at the negative experience some autistic people may have with THC, but also going into the negatives of CBD and the positives in future videos. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please consider liking, subscribing for future dives into interesting autism content. My new streaming and commentary channel is officially up and running. So if you want to catch up with the new stream clips that I have over there, you can find the link down in the description. And if you love what I do and you want to support me in creating more videos, the best way that you can do that is by joining the memberships for as little as one pound per, per month. Per month. Per month. You will get some cool benefits with memberships, such as access to full uncut live streams and much more. Remember that I am not a doctor and you shouldn't take these videos as encouragement to try anything. Always consult, consult your local laws or doctor on anything medical related and yeah. Love you guys and I'll see you later, you interoceptively challenged sausage. Seriously, go drink some water.